hey folks and welcome once again to the Morse Adventures 2024 day 39 on July the 18th and it's day uh, 26 of our Canadian Adventures and you say well what's all about the Canadian Adventures for those of you who haven't been following us this is actually the sixth day that we've been in Canada um, we're going to be here for the the next two weeks for sure. Let's see. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll be here till about the 10th of August we'll be in Canada. Something like that. Anyway, um, and we call it the Canadian Adventures because of our six-week trip. About four weeks of it is going to be here in Canada. Um our rally, which was the reason why we're in Canada to begin with, uh, with the International uh, Campers Club, ended last night. Today was uh, today would have normally been the end of it, and yesterday would have been the free night, but uh, people have got some obligations. They had to get back to the States. Uh, some of them from here had to get over to Michigan for a wedding and other personal things uh, with other people. So, hey, um, today was our free day. You know, and I say officially it, it ended last night, but people stuck around. And most of us, if not all the rest of us, will be leaving in the morning or sometime tomorrow uh, before 11. That's when checkout time is. But today was was um, a, a beautiful day. I mean, <laughs> you know, we've had some, some days and nights here that uh, it kind of rocked and rolled a little bit and had a little bit of rain and and some wind and, and all that kind of stuff. But today was just one of those beautiful days. We started off at the Renew Acre, uh, Renew Canal locks. And I have seen pictures of how locks work. And, you know, you've seen it in science class and how it, you know, it works and all this sort of stuff. Even videos. But until you see it in person, you won't believe it. And the locks that we went to is a series of four locks. And they're hand operated. Unlike other systems that are all automated now, uh, these were were hand hand cranks for the, uh, the what do they call it? Not the gates, but the. Uh, um, I'll start with an S. Now I can't remember what the name of it is. Anyway, it's 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 basically an underwater gate. Okay. What was it, Mama? Sleuth, that's it, sleuth. And, uh, you know, they'd raise it up little bit by little bit and let the water flow underneath it there, into the sleuth and to the bottom of the of the lock and raise the water or drain the water, whichever the case may be. And then they would open up the locks, again, by hand crank and chain and cable. And awesome. We saw uh, two ships go up the incline. And then one come down, and when they got about halfway, the one coming down, and two more came up, and one of the uh, uh, the tenders there, one of the staff said, this is something that we normally don't do. We usually hold everybody at the far end, or, or the lower end, or the upper end, and let everybody get on through. But because of the size of the ships, and the size of the canals, the locks, we're able to do this, and we were able to see three ships pass, going in opposite directions one going downstream and two going upstream and it was it was really neat to to see how they pulled it off and uh you know in in one area they have a swing gate a, a swing bridge uh type of, of drawbridge that they had to open to get the two ships up river and then when the one came down, they had already closed the, the or opened, well, closed to the boats, but opened the road, if that makes sense, for the vehicles to get across. They were able, because they were going downstream, they were able to leave the road open because they lowered the locks water and the antennas and everything on it and the uh, uh, pilot's uh, uh, post on the ship, the past right underneath the... Uh, the drawbridge, so it's, it was kind of neat to see that. Then, uh, you know, then we folks, uh, we went on, uh, no, this is not Gulligan's Island, okay, but we went on a three-hour tour 
to the uh, and 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 saw some of the Thousand Islands of the Thousand Island uh, Park System. Uh, it's both a Canadian park and a U.S. park. Um, we went from Kingston to the Admiralty Islands. Um, I think they said uh, on in the fall when the Lawrence River is low. There's what was it, Sean? Uh, thousand eight hundred and seventy-six or seventy-three yeah, islands. Right. You know, of course, now in the spring and summer and all that, when the river's higher, there's not as many, but there are at least a thousand. Okay, and that's why they call it the Thousand Islands Park. Uh, and and I learned today, in order to be called an island, it has to one, be above the surface. Two, have a tree on it, a live tree. Nope, doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. That's right. That's because that's where the birds were and it was dead, huh? And what was the third one? Tap water, have a tree. I think that's it. Rocks. There was there was three things. I can't remember it. And 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 having a house on it or a building was not one of the three. Okay. Be like 12 feet by 12 feet. That's right. There you go. Had to be uh, uh, 12 by 12, a minimum of 12 by 12. So, had to be above the surface, had to have a tree on it, and be at least uh, uh, 12 by 12. Okay. So, you know, but uh, that's what constitutes an island. <laughs> so, it was it was a good trip. And, uh, you know, we were an hour and a half out and circled around and through the Admiral Tree Islands and came back. Uh, saw some beautiful homes, you know, and, and you, you think about why would somebody, I mean, these, there was one house, and I can't remember who, who built it, but he gave it to the hospital for a fundraiser. It was like in his will, and it was sold for $15,000. That house sold, now this is years ago, all right, but that house sold uh, in 2017 for $2 million. The same house, all right, the same house. But it was, again, a good time. Um, then we went uh, went and tried to find a couple places to eat. Uh, we all, uh, and we... <laughs> I asked the guy where we finally ended up eating. I says, what is Canadian food? He says, a little of everything from every place. <laughs> you know, so there is no real Canadian food, but we know better. Um, so we we ended up re eating at the Red House uh, in, on King Street in downtown Kingston, uh, Kingston uh, Ontario, Canada. Another place I will, will name remain unnamed. Uh, I walked into there and the menu was... Uh, ritzy <laughs> way over our head and a lot of the words uh you know were in french and uh, none of the five of us speak french so we had no clue in fact i i made a comment and the lady says well that's right there that's and she pronounced it and i says that doesn't say garlic shrimp to me <laughs> 42 dollars they don't speak french to me i mean it don't they don't speak garlic shrimp to me either for 42 dollars but anyway she said, listen, she goes, we understand that, you know. And uh, so she uh, she gave us a couple other places to go to. They had a simpler meal. And, uh, you know, it was it was okay. All right. And we did bring some uh, take-home boxes. All right. But, uh, you know, then we came back and, and, and broke camp. I mean, the only things we have to do in, in the morning now is, uh, you know, Electric sewer and water, and pull the slide in, let the jacks up, hook up the RV, the, the jeep to the RV, and head to Montreal. So, that being said, folks, it is already 10:30, 10:27, and the video is already 10 minutes long. So we're going to go ahead and and get into the scripture here. I again, like I said before, you know, I don't. Uh, 
I don't want to, to, to rush through this, you know. But this scripture, I won't say it's a mantra of mine, okay? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all. But I do take a lot of guidance and um, direction from this scripture in my own personal life. And if it fits you, that's fine. If not, then, you know, that's okay because the Holy Spirit deals with me in one way, deals with you in another way. All right. But today's scripture, folks, is Luke 8, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For, for the same measure that as you use, it will be measured back to you. What's all that mean? In the plain, my dad's English, you out, you can't outgive God. So don't try. Just give. Okay? I mean, that's what he would say a lot of times. You can't outgive God. You know, there's another scripture here. And folks, I'm, I'm going to do some flipping here. I hope you'll forgive me. But um, there's there's a lot of times we get wrapped up in a lot of things. And you might think that this scripture is, is talking about finances and in many ways it is all right I, i'm not going to deny that but think about the other talents okay think about the other gifts that god has given you how do you use them do you keep them locked away and they're only for you or do you use those gifts that god gave you To help others. And we're not talking just. Um, that are, are within the faith. Remember. God created all of us. Sinners and Christians alike. Alright. You know. There's there's the, the time there where it says. You know. I was hungry and you fed me. I was cold. I was cold and you gave me clothes. You know, um, I was destitute and you gave me give me room. You know, when did I do all this? Well, what he's talking about is every time that you help someone in need, you were helping him, him being God, him being Christ. Okay. All right. And and. I, I'm looking for a particular scripture, folks. And, uh, you know, so let's go back. I, I found it. I believe I did. All right, so let's go back to today's scripture. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, it will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use it, the measure will be given back to you. And that goes right in line with Malachi 3.10. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. And I, I use this a lot. And I, <laughs> you said, well, if you use it a lot, how come it took you so, so, so long to find it? Because I forgot what verse it was. I knew what book it was. All right. And it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there will may be food in my house. And try me in this, says the Lord. I will, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out upon you such a blessing, there will be no room enough to receive it. Okay? What's it say right here? For the same, they'll be running down and be, you know, we're shaking together, running over 
will be put into your bosom. For the same measure that you use it, the same measure will be given back to you. And the the the, the commentary, you know, for today's scripture, you know, is, is talking the, the it's it's the law of investment is what they call it. Give and it will be given. Works wherever it puts it into practice. All right, you got that? Whatever works. Not just your money, okay? A person who puts godly financial principles into practice will know measure of God's blessing in this realm. He gives back running over. It says in this realm. It doesn't say in a spiritual realm. This is in this realm. And and I use this, and I say this, I mean this RV, I use it as a prime example of what I'm talking about. You know. Since I came back and got serious relationship, personal relationship with Jesus Christ, since I become a Christian, all right, there's one thing that Chrissy and I have always, always done. And that was pay our tithes and give an additional offering. Sometimes I might have been tight. That additional offering has never been tight for the tithes. That has never been a discussion. That's paid first. All right. I might get paid on Monday, but the check's already written come, come Sunday. All right. It's written that, that day first. All right. And of course, Chrissy does all the bills. But the offerings is in addition to. So that's what it says. Give and it shall be given. Good measure shall press down, shaken together, and running over and, and be put into your rosin. For the same measure you use it will be measured back to you. All right. So let's go back to Malachi 3.10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me in this. Folks, this is the only scripture in the entire Bible that God says to try him. Everywhere else, he says, trust me. But this one, he says, try me. See if I don't. Okay? Because that's what it says. Try me, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings, there will not, there will not be room enough to receive it. All right? Like my daddy said, you can't outgive God. Okay, but we're not just talking. And, and like I said, you know, I, you know, people say, "Well, you, you must be well off to have this RV." No, it's proof of God's word right here, because we're faithful in our tithes and offering, and, and He provided a way for us to have an RV. It's not the top of the line, but it's definitely at the bottom of the line, and it's doing. Even though I want another one, this is doing okay. This is doing what we want. And I know Chrissy sitting back there. She's going, I'm going to use that against you now because you done said it on your video. There is another RV that I want. Yes. <laughs> and the Lord knows the desires of my heart. <laughs> okay. But that doesn't mean I'm going to get it. <laughs> Just because I desire it don't mean I need it. I understand you, Chrissy. <laughs> but the Lord knows that I want it. <laughs> All right. But what about more? You know, it, it, folks, that <laughs> I'm getting, I don't want to be flippant. Okay. But there's more to this than just the financial practice. Or even though the commentary says, you know, whenever we put these financial practices into work, into other realms, you know, helping others in many different ways, you know, helping others achieve, you know, helping others when they're stumbling. You pick them up, you carry them, you put their arm around your shoulder, and you lift them up, and you carry them, and you help them walk, walk with them, guide them, okay? That is also giving. That is also give. You know, when we, when we help someone in whatever issue manner that we may be able to okay we are being the hands and feet then of Jesus Christ okay we're doing what we're supposed to do 
we're showing that agape love that I spoke of earlier this week for four days. We spoke of love, you know, First Corinthians thirteen started with started with verse four and ended up with verse eight. You know, that's the love that I'm talking about. God's love, that agape love. But when we allow ourselves to be a worthy vessel, a willing, not say worthy, a willing vessel. That God can use us as He desires to use us. We are giving. Giving and it will be given unto you. If you're giving God's love to somebody else. Just think of how much more God's love is going to come back to you. If you're giving your time to somebody else. Just think of how much more God's time is going to be given to you. No matter what instances you want to put it into use. It's going to come back to you. All right? It's going to come back to you. Will it be tomorrow? Maybe not. Be next year? Maybe not. But in God's timing, God's will, it will be. Okay? So this scripture, and like I said, you know, it, they call it the law of investment. And that's exactly what it is because, folks, we are not only investing in God's kingdom here on earth by planting the seed. Because you've heard me say it before. I plant the seed. The Holy Spirit fertilizes it. God reaps it. Okay? If we do God's work here on earth, give as we're called to give, our rewards are going to be much, much more in heaven. And even in some cases i.e. this RV, our rewards are going to be here also. Okay? This is the law of investment. It didn't say finances, although many people interpret it as being finances. I interpret it as being doing what God asks you to do. Investing in God's kingdom. You know? Now, there's, there's, there's things that we do, and I'm not trying to be braggadocious or anything of that nature. Okay, but, you know, we, we sponsor a child overseas. We sponsor a mission work overseas. We pay our tithes. We give offerings. We help different organizations, different things within the church and the community that we're aware of. Because God has given us the ability to do that. And I'm not talking about just finances, folks. Please, please, please. Get out and work with the needy. Go out, you know, and you know, there, there's a couple of programs I'll watch on, on YouTube. Just, uh, you say, oh, no, here I go, another YouTube thing, you know. It's And, and the reason I bring it up is because it's an example of, of somebody giving. The, a couple of these programs that I watch. They're individuals that have landscaping and, and lawn care, yard care businesses. And they mow and trim and clean yards for free for those that can't afford it. Sometimes they're, 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 they're close to being uh, fined uh, uh, you know, by the, the city or whatever they're living in because their yards are such a disarray. And they come in and do it for free. They're investing in God's community. Okay, They're doing God's work. And yes, some of those programs that I watch, you know, they're, they're, they're Christian men, Christian families. And some of them are not, but they know what's needs to be done. We're doing God's work. We're investing in God's kingdom. We are being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And we're taking care of God's children. Okay? Now, folks, that's all I got for tonight. Okay? But I can assure you that if you do give, it will be given back to you. And if you don't have that assurance that God can do all this, then let me tell you how you can. Okay? Number one is you ask Him to be your personal Savior. You develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you do that by just repeating after me. 
Abba Father, I just come to you as a sinner. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. To wash my sins away with the blood that your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for me. When he said yes and became my sacrificial lamb, my atonement for my transgressions and my sins. When he gave his life and shed his blood for my sins. I only hope, Father, that I can be so worthy. That I was so unworthy. But now worthy to be a vessel for you. And let me be a living sacrifice for you. And let me do your will. And Abba Father, I just ask that you send the Holy Spirit to me. And guide me and lead me and, 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 and live within me. That I know that I can give beyond measure. Not that you're going to give something back to me. But because I'm yours and that's what I'm supposed to do. I pray this in Jesus Christ's name, Heavenly Father. Amen. Now, folks, I realize it's 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 you know this is this is a good scripture. It's 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 probably more one for 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 a believer already than a non-believer. But sometimes we we need to be reminded. Okay, we need to be reminded of it, and it's just not you know monetary value or investment. It's other things that it's those other gifts that God's given us to use. Okay. So there's four things I'd ask for you to do. All right. One of them is to call a friend that you know is a Christian and ask them to help you and guide you. All right. Tell them you just you just gave your heart to Christ and and you know there's going to be troubles and ask them to help and 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 just be there to to mentor you and hold you up when you stumble. All right. Another one is to get yourself a Bible. Not don't just get it, open it up and read it. Okay, read it every day. The next one is to pray. Pray every day. Pray all day long if you can. All right. Because remember, prayer is just a conversation between you and your dad. All right. In this case, it's your heavenly father. All right. The fourth thing is to find yourself a Bible believing. Bible, gospel teaching, full gospel teaching, church, preaching church, and attend it. The scripture tells us that we need to assemble ourselves together. All right, because now that you're a follower of Christ, Satan is going to come after you with a whole lot of a whole lot of trouble and a whole lot of tribulation. All right, that's why you need to have that friend with you to help you, and you need to be 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 going to church and and, and worshiping. Reading your Bible every day and praying every day. All right. So tomorrow we're going to be somewhere north. Yeah, even north of here. All right. We're still going to be in Canada. But until then, God bless and good night.